Hi everyone, welcome to Galt IAS. So today in this session, we are going to write a model answer. That is for the mains perspective, we shall discuss how to approach a model answer. Okay, so the model question will be from the topic anti-defection law. See this anti-defection law is very much important or very much current affairs relevant topic. Because you may come across many defections happening in various states. Okay, so based on that, this topic is very much relevant. So from this topic itself, let's frame a model question and try to address this question. Okay, so the question is 10th schedule which aimed at ensuring the stability of the executive is fruitless. Point out the drawbacks of anti-defection law and suggest measures to prevent horse trading in our parliamentary democracy. The question says that 10th schedule that is anti-defection law aim was to ensure stability of executive that is the aim of the 10th schedule was to ensure the stability of the government but it is from found to be fruitless in many cases it is not stable that's the statement given here so now in the second part of the question point out the drawbacks of anti-defection law and suggest measures to prevent horse trading in our parliamentary democracy so when you come across a question first you thoroughly understand the demand of the question so here question is regarding anti-defection law so in the introduction part we must write what is anti-defection law and says that the aim was to ensure the stability of the government. So we must write the aim or the objectives or the importance of anti-defection law. And since it is a 250 mark question, we must write some of the provisions of anti-defection law. And the second part of the question says that point out the drawbacks of anti-defection law. So we must write some of the drawbacks of anti-defection law and suggest measures to prevent horse trading. We must also give suggestions to overcome these drawbacks. So this is the demand of the question. See once you are able to decode or once you are able to understand the question then you can make a perfect answer. So give importance to understanding the question. Okay so now let's move on to how to write an answer. See since the topic is regarding anti-defection law in the introduction part we must write what is anti-defection law. So write your points like the 52nd Amendment Act uh, provides for the disqualification of members of parliament as well as members of state legislature on the ground of defection. The 52nd Amendment Act is important. The ground of defection. These two terms must be there in your answer. Because these terms have that much relevant. Because the judicial source that you know the 52nd Amendment Act only added this provision to the constitution. And you say that you know the grounds for disqualifying a member. So now your intro become authentic. Because you clearly in a single sentence you have written two crystal clear points. That is 52nd Amendment Act provides for the disqualification of members. So what is the objective of anti-defection law? Disqualification of members of parliament and state legislature when on the ground of defection. That is enough. You can also add one more point. This added tend the schedule to the constitution of India that is enough for induction part. Okay, question says that the aim was to ensure the stability of the government. So write some of the aims or objectives or importance or necessity of this so called anti defection law. What you can write to strengthen the parliamentary democracy. So you can make a spider diagram. See not need not always write in points in one paper in for an answer you can use this kind of diagrams and add points. So this may look your paper much more attractive. Okay. So importance of anti-defection law. It may strengthen the parliamentary democracy. It ensures the stability of the government. Again, corruption at the political level can be reduced. Again, the constitution recognizes the existence of political parties. This is because of this law only for the first time, the constitution recognizes the political parties. That means giving importance to political parties. You can say that they can constate more on governance. Otherwise, what will happen? The political parties may more focus on the stability. Now, because of this law, it enables the government to focus more on governance. Like this, we can add a few points for the importance part. Okay. Now, since it is a 250 mark question, we must write in three pages. We are writing some of the core provisions of the anti-defection law. See, the question does not demand to write the provisions of the anti-defection law. Okay, but we are writing it to give an extra edge to our answers. Fine. So, 
when can a member be subject to disqualification right of action law if a member after getting elected voluntarily gives up his party membership then he can be disqualified based on anti defection law or if a member of legislature or member of parliament anywhere votes or abstain from voting against the party directions his party will sometimes give a directions to vote for this or not to vote for this okay but he is acting against the party directions without permission he can be subjected to disqualification under anti defection law or see an independent member after getting elected if he or she joins a political party then also can be disqualified or a nominated member joins a political party after 6 months then he or she can be disqualified based on anti defection law. but the not only is that a nominated member has the provision to join a political party within 6 months if he or she joins a political party within 6 months disqualification will not be applied but after 6 months if a nominate member joins a political party, disqualification applies. But in case of independent member, whenever he joins a political party, either within or after 6 months, he can be subject to disqualification under anti defection law. So, these provisions you must note down. And who is the deciding authority uh, in case of anti defection? It is the presiding office of the house. In case of Lok Sabha, it is speaker. In case of Rai Sabha, it is chairman. He is the deciding authority in case of anti defection law. So, now our answer includes introduction part some objectives some of the provisions fine now we move on to the second part of the question which is point out the drawbacks of anti defection law so we are writing some of the drawbacks of anti defection law but it curbs the legislature's right to speech see a legislature or an indian citizen has a right to speech under article 19 of the constitution but see because of this provision of anti defection law a legislature cannot open his conscience. Why? Because he has to follow the party directions. So, this law curbs the legislature's right to speech. He cannot speech whatever he likes, or he cannot give vote to whatever he wishes. No. It is depending upon the directions from the political party which he or she belongs. Fine? Second, there is a difference between nominated member as well as independent member. As I said, that independent member joins. He can be subject to disqualification, but see, a nominated member can join a political party within six months. So, there is a discrimination between a nominated member as well as an independent member that you can point out. Then, see, who decides this qualification is the presiding officer or the speaker of Lok Sabha. See, they can be politically biased. We cannot 100% ensure the neutrality of those presiding officers. Why? Because in case of Lok Sabha, the speaker is mostly from the ruling party only. So, there can be a biasness. We cannot always expect a neutrality from the speaker. So, there is a possibility of being biasness towards a concerned political party that may happen. Then see, there is a difference between group merge, group defection as well as individual defection. See, there is an exception to anti-defection law that, that if a party A joins a par political party B, that means a two political parties or so two or more political parties merge together. There are certain conditions for that also, but if two or more political parties join together and as a result of that merger is some person's motto of the political party, then this anti-defection law will not apply. This shows that group defection is allowed, but if a single person is defecting, it is not allowed. So that is also one of the drawbacks of anti-defection law. Then there is no time limit for the presiding officer to take action. If a disqualification motion is there or a petition is given there then no time limit is prescribed for the speaker or the chairman to take action there also there is chances for being biased okay so that's also a drawback of anti-defection law and see many times legislatures lose the loophole of resigning from the political party see if a legislature moves to another party or voluntarily resigns, then only this anti-defection law applies. But legislators what do? They will resign as a member of legislative assembly or resign as an MP. See, recently in the Karnataka assembly issue as well as Puducherry assembly issues, we come across these situations. Legislators resign and in the by-election, they cut the selection and many of the uh, contestants win in the by-election also. Okay, so that is also one of the drawbacks. That is, legislators are using the loophole to resign from as a member itself 
then they are contesting by election so this ultimately affects the objective of the or the intention of the anti defection law fine so all these things leads to the instability of the government or leads to the instability of the executive this point is very much important why because in question says that tend the schedule which aimed at ensuring the stability of executive is fruitless a statement is given so we must justify or we must connect our points to the demand of the question so we must say is that because of the so and so issues this leads to the instability of the government now we address the first part of the question that is ten schedule which aimed at ensuring the stability of executive fruitless now that part is addressed here right so connect our answers to the demand of the question fine and now you can suggest some measures but you can say that law can be amended that a recent legislature cannot contest a by election at least for a period of 5 years or 10 years like as you can give suggestions see in karnataka have what happened a legislature are resigning soon he uh, go for the by elections and many of the legislators get elected in their by election also so okay so it also affects the what the stability of the executive so you can say that the law can be amended and make provisions that legislature are resigning should not contact or should not contest in the by election at least for a period of 5 years like as you can give suggestions to your answers fine then you can say that the presiding officer can be given time limit to take action see currently the speaker or the chairman does not have the time limit to take action you can say that one also here then if possible try to court the committee recommendations like say dinesh goswami committee or irc committee or any kind of recommendations depending upon the demand of the question you court the So in case of this topic, you can mention about the Dinesh Goswami Committee. See, Dinesh Goswami Committee said that the applicability of issuing of VIP or anti-defection law may be restricted to the vote of confidence alone. That is, in case of vote of confidence motion only, this can be applied. Likewise, Dinesh Goswami Committee recommended. Also, it recommended that the decision should not be taken by the presiding officer or the chairman or speaker. Why? Because there can be a biasness. Okay, so we can say that a tribunal can be appointed to decide the disqualification of those based on anti defection law, and this may include members of judiciary as well as administrative officers. Likewise, you can give your suggestions as well. So this is the approach. So when you come across a mains question, this is the approach you have to answer it. That is, you must give an intro part, then some importance, then you must address all the demands of the course. That is, provisions you are mentioned here, drawbacks you are mentioned here. Then suggestions also you are given, and then then up to the dynamic conclusion showing the values of parliamentary democracy. Here an amendment act is mentioned. Fine. Then what importance is mentioned? A diagrammatic representation or a spider diagram is drawn here. Okay, various points are written here. Then committee recommendations are quoted here. If possible, try to quote the any of the articles regarding article number regarding this anti-defection law. You can also quote a Supreme Court verdict. Also quote a case name called Kihoto Hollohan case. In that Supreme Court said that uh, the decision of the speaker or the chairman is subjected to judicial review. Earlier the provision said that the decision of the presiding officer is final and binding. But Supreme Court in Kihoto Hollohan case said that the decision of the speaker or the chairman is not beyond judicial review. But it is subjected to judicial review. So, if you quote a Supreme Court verdict, the your answer becomes much more authentic, right? So, committee recommendations, articles, amendments, Supreme Court verdicts, all this makes your answer much more better. I hope you are clear this. Okay. And one more thing I want to share with you is that we Gandhi's is providing a complete prelims main course for the civil service aspirants. At an affordable fee, so all these stages of exams like prelims, mains, and interview, all these things will be covered under this integrated approach. So, if you want to know more about our courses and programs, you can visit our website at galdias.com, and also for any queries, you can contact us at this given number. Okay, then bye.